Hey friends, Azure Container Instances, or ACI, is a super flexible compute option. Today, folks are using it for all sorts of things like long-running processes, back-end APIs, worker roles, and logic app workflows, and even build and test pipelines. Mark Rosinovich is back <clears throat> six years after his last visit to show me how it works and more today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott Hansman and it's Azure Friday. I've got Mark Rosinovich with me. Our multi-year long Twitter beef is over. We've come together to share Azure uh, with the people. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, thanks. Thanks for finally having me back on. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. You always bring me such wonderful demos. And today you're gonna explain to me what ACI is. It's one of our wonderful offerings that you're gonna explain and show me hopefully some great demos. That's right. Okay, so what so is ACI? Uh, well, ACI stands for Azure Container Instances, and you can think of it as serverless containers as a service. We introduced it a little over two years ago. We were the first cloud to introduce serverless containers. And what serverless containers means is in contrast to the more standard way that people are deploying containers where they launch a virtual machine and then they go deploy the containers, Docker images into that virtual machine. With ACI, you simply call the ACI endpoint and say, deploy this image. And the ACI service takes care of managing the infrastructure underneath those containers and you just interact with the container. So it's a very lightweight, very easy way to get containers up and running. But if I have like multiple containers or I want an orchestrator, where, where does ACI stop and then a container orchestrator start? Yeah, good question. We've got uh, container groups. So there is some light uh, ability to deploy multiple containers that work together, but if you want sophisticated orchestration, rolling upgrades and other features like that, then you're gonna to wanna to use a, a container orchestrator like Kubernetes with Azure Kubernetes Service. Okay, now I have a container that I'm running uh, part of my website on and I didn't really know what I was doing and I picked Azure App Service and I put it into the Linux container up there. Uh, why would I use ACI and when would I put it on my web container? When would I do that? Well, ACI is great for long running workloads that would be like a middle tier or, or uh, supporting microservices as part of a larger application that might have a web app as the front end that you would run on app service. So it's really great for uh, taking care of that, that kind of middle infrastructure that is kind of agnostic to a programming model like mm. a web front end. Oh, so if I put like Dapper, that would be a good thing for ACI. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so then my, my podcast though has got like SSL certs and it's really HTTP traffic. That's kind of an app service thing. So that makes more sense That's for me. Yeah, app service takes care of those things like SSL termination and load balancing on the front and your domain name registration and, and uh, mapping. Okay, but you said it was serverless containers, but Azure Functions is serverless functions and there's a container runtime that I can get that lets me run those functions. But that's, that's different. Yeah. When would I use functions? When would I use ACI? Good question. Functions uh, is serverless as well. Functions is really designed for kind of short run event driven microservices. So little tasks that are stateless that pop in and out mm. uh, that are get, get invoked through some trigger. Whereas uh, with ACI, you can choose to have them be event driven, but you can have them sit there and be long running. You can have them run for hours or days or weeks or months. Uh, so really they are kind of agnostic to the way that you interact with them. And so then are more kind of flexible in general purpose. I like that. So then when you said originally that serverless containers, that's the best way to think about this. It is just that I can have serverless functions, kind of units of work as a service. I can have web apps as a service on Azure web apps, but this is containers that I can spin up, spin down, pay as I go, and then if I outgrow them, I outgrow them into the AKS ecosystem. So I really have a lot of great choices here. Yep, in fact, um, there is a, a cool integration with AKS, uh, which is through Virtual Kubelet, hmm. which allows you to create a serverless Kubernetes cluster with ACI as the back end for it. Wow, okay, this is cool. So this is enough talk. I wanna see some amazing demos. Yeah. So I'm gonna switch to show your screen, all right? All right, sure. Okay, here we go. So what I've got here is an ACI YAML file. This would specify the, the deployment of a, a single image container or single container here. You can see that here's the image. And what this, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this in a minute, but what this container does is uh, accepts it, uh, images and then does OCR on those images and then reports back the text. 
through a simple web API. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see that I've got it mapped internally, the image itself to a port here. And then I've also specified through ACI that I want a public IP address. And then I also want that port to be port 5000. So this way I'll be able to interact with that container instance uh, from the web. And so why don't we switch over to the portal. And I've got a, a cloud shell here. Uh, I've got here an Azure CLI command line here. You can see container create. This is the ACI command to create an ACI container based off of that YAML here. This is going to pull down that image and going to go ahead and launch that. Whoops, I'm in the wrong directory. Happens to the best of us. Azure Cloud Shell is great because that AZ tool is just right there. It takes no, no time at all and it's available exactly. right there at the top of the portal. Yeah. And uh, if we switch over here, um, we got the, that ACI container deployed and you can see stats coming out of it. So it's monitoring metrics that show up out of it. And these things start up really fast, right? Now I could use a VM for kind of work like this, but containers are easier, they're lighter weight, and there's a whole tooling ecosystem around them. So when I want to spin something up fast and easy, the ACI is a great choice. Uh, that's exactly right. And at the pay as you go, it's billing by the second. So wow. it's, uh, and, and also you can dynamically choose the size of the container. If we go back to that YAML file, let me pull it up here. Uh, oops, open the wrong Visual Studio. No worries. Uh, Here you can see actually that I've got uh, four CPUs. So is this a four core with mm. eight gig, but I can pick whatever I need to. And this is about what the size I need to do that OCR machine learning model to run that eff efficiently. So that's the size that I pick, but we could pick something smaller or larger. I even noticed that restart policy there saying restart on failure. So that's super useful as well, being able to de decide when this workload starts and stops. Yeah, that's that's uh, right. And actually, that highlights the fact that um, a lot of people think that this is a dev test service. This is something where you just, if you want to play around with your images, get them running, figure them out, and then go to something like AKS to actually deploy them for production. Actually, it is designed for production, and we have customers that are running for pr in production. So things like support for VNets, support for init containers, which a lot of customers have asked for. So these kind of initialization containers that run before your main microservice container has support for that, which is required for many production scenarios. Uh, so, and it and volume mounts as well, so you can mount uh, disks to it, uh, to them, so you can have them have managed state as well. So a bunch of functionality here that really make these general purpose and for many workloads, you can fully replace virtual machines with. Yeah, I wanted my kids to stop running Minecraft servers on my local machine here, so I just run them in ACI and the per second billing makes it really easy to spin up a Minecraft server in the cloud. But don't tell Azure. Yeah. Um, so why don't we go to, and take a look at this container in action? Um, just to prove to you, it's got this public IP address here. If I can grab. You got that little IP. copy there icon there too on the right. Yeah, but it, no, it, it copies that public thing, so I'd have to edit it anyway. So that should go on your list of bugs. You tell your friends. Actually, it actually already is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so this is. Um, uh, got swagger definition for the API that it exposes here. Nice. And so uh, you can see that it's got a the synchronous read where we can try it out and upload an image and choose a file. I love swagger UIs on web APIs. It's so nice. And I've got a few files in here. Oh, uh, from, aren't these convenient? One of my favorite books, actually. Uh, these are um, some of my favorite books. Yeah. I understand uh, they were optioned as films, and I await those films. They were. The options expired. So if anybody's out there interested in making really cool techno thriller movie, um, check it out. Excellent. Um, and then you can see down here in the response oh, wow. that, sure enough, uh, we got Zero Day as the, as the OCR back from container instance. That was really fast. Really cool. But it gets even cooler, actually, because um, ACI has got integrations with logic apps. And so, you know, I was just 
sitting there manually uploading an image. But if we wanted something more automated, this part of a larger application where, for example, we're dropping images into a storage account and we want them automatically OCR for us, mm -hmm. you can do that pretty simply too using Logic Apps. So I've got this Logic App here. And if I go into the edit view, we can walk through the flow here. Uh, so you can see when pictures added or modified to a blob storage container. We'll look at that in a minute. Capture the file name, get the properties of the container group, and then there's this condition. And that, that get properties is calling basically an, the ACI connector for Logic Apps. And the condition is, is there already a container instance running? And if there's not, then use that uh, ACI connector to go fire up the ACI instance before proceeding with the workflow. And if true, just proceed which is to get the picture content from the storage account, send it over HTTP to the container instance, transform the HTTP output that comes back to text, and then store the text from the OCR back into the storage account. Mm. You know, not to be too much a fanboy or fan person, but that, that kind of demo is pure money because People should not be sleeping on how exciting it is that you can spin up a container for a few seconds in the middle of a logic app workflow. You really think about that business logic as part of the larger logic app. You get the benefits of that great designer, and then you get to use that container that you're probably already, you've got the image for, you're already running that container somewhere internally. Put that up in the cloud, and the integration is just chef's kiss. Yeah. And if we want to check a look at this, uh, take a look at this in action, we can do a upload a blob. So. I go select another one of those files. Mm -hmm. Let's pick uh, okay. that one. And upload. If we go back to Logic Apps now and go look at the run history, click on it, and then we want to go see the HTTP result. Look at that. Actually, there it is. The text from the OCR. It came out of the container instance going into that storage account. That's so cool. What a great integration. That's very clean. And then um, finally, the last part of this demo is showing that you can take the ACI container instances and put them behind web app front ends because as we were talking about, App Service does a bunch of nice things for a web front end. And then uh, ACI container can actually do some of your middle tier workloads. So we wanted to put a, for example, a web app front end on front of a bunch of container instances, we can do that. So I've got this web app front end here, picture to text app. And behind this web app front end are a bunch of container instances. So when I choose a file here in the front end, pick another page and submit it, what's gonna happen is that that calls the ACI container app with the and gets back the text and also uh, displays the image that the text is coming from. So you can see the last words here are company never to go. And then the OCR came back company never to go. So ACI now part of a larger application sitting inside of a VNet along with the web app front end sitting in front of a load balance behind a load balancer and front uh, behind a public IP address with uh, uh, what you would obviously want to do is put a domain name on top of that. And now you got a full featured app with uh, microservices implemented as as serverless containers. That is really cool. And see, I'm thinking back to my kind of like initial naive usage of containers on Azure, which is I just took a website and I put it on Azure App Service. Now I could see where the back end of my app service could potentially be ACI. I've got logic apps and flows and things like that. Um, there's a lot that can be done with this kind of these Lego pieces that we can start putting together and mixing and matching. And then, like we said before at the beginning, if I outgrow them, I'm going to outgrow them into something like AK, AKS, and then I get a whole orchestration. That's right. Yeah. Very and, cool. And like, like I said, even you can outgrow, you know, into full blown AKS where you're dealing with the virtual machines and deploying containers to those virtual machines, or you can take that intermediate step where how I do need the orchestration. I want a Kubernetes interface on top of that orchestration and deploy Helm charts, for example, uh, but with ACI based containers underneath that. So I've got, basically a fully serverless Kubernetes experience because AKS is serverless, uh, the control uh, servers, and then uh, I've also got the serverless backend. 
Now, I noticed at the beginning when you did the command, you're doing AC, uh, AZ container, but I understand that we announced an integration with Docker because I'm used to using Docker images and Docker this and that. Can I do ACI from the Docker command line that I'm more used to? Actually, you can use Docker directly. So it's in the integration with Docker Desktop. You can set uh, ACI context using the Docker Desktop client, and then Docker Run with that context will launch the image into ACI, and then you can interact with it as normal. Wow. Okay. Everything is mixed and matchable and pluggable. Everything can be plugged together. Yeah. So that is that does make it really convenient to do dev tests with containers. Uh, okay. Is that Docker integration? So it's not just for dev tests. We can use it for prod. I can put any kind of workload that makes me happy up there, not just HTTP. I can make these things quickly. I can spin them up, uh, be build per second, spin them back down. Uh, and then I'm using the container ecosystem, that rich open source container ecosystem. So whether it be Dapper or any kind of thing I want to put in there, I can. Uh, there really is no reason not to use ACI, is there? No. I, I, in fact, it's one of my favorite services just for that reason. Whenever I need to launch an image, or a few images, ACI to the rescue. Very cool, ACI for the rescue. That should be the name of our, our series. This is the first of a series of videos that we're gonna showcase some of those serverless containers that we can do in Azure with ACI. Thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me and showing me this stuff, sir. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for ha finally having me back. I hope you invite me back again soon. Absolutely. I am learning all about ACI and serverless containers today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it. Watch more Azure Friday.